soak it in. <laughs> Hello and welcome. My name is Tuesday Mae Thomas. I am an author, a speaker, and a master Reiki teacher of almost 20 years. I'm so excited to be setting up my platform, and I know I've been talking about it a lot. I'm going to be sharing new books at the end of this year and all sorts of giveaways. Please do subscribe to this channel. And as promised, I know I said it last month, but I will be bringing you a Merkaba meditation, a guided meditation that I will do with you, and also an introduction video to give you sort of some juicy information and understanding of what that is. Thank you for joining me for your monthly tarot reading. I use the Osho Zen tarot deck and also the Mayan Oracle deck. So right away I see there is this need, this want, this pull to go on an adventure, to be and regain your innocence and your childlike composure that has released knowing what the answers are, that has released and relinquished control of any outcome and that speaks a lot to what was coming up last month. Adventure. Adventures happen when you don't know <laughs> what's on the other side of the mountain. Adventures happen when you are open and living spontaneously. And that's where the magic, the miracles, and the opportunities and the possibilities become accentuated, is when you have the beginner's mind and you don't have it all figured out. It's one thing to have a ruse it's one thing to have <laughs> a loose plan of goals or you know where you see sort of a vision for yourself whether you're going camping for the weekend or you're launching your career but at the same time to leave spaces in between so the sacred space the sacred energy of the most high love of the most divine source can come through and speak to you and guide you and that's when you go on an adventure. You know, the adventure really speaks to that innocence and it speaks to not only following your heart and your dreams, but also it speaks to you lighting up your inner light by honoring your truth. And that's the biggest adventure you will ever go on, is following your heart and following the lead that it gives you. Okay, we're going to come back to this. And it's interesting because last month there was such a huge focus on meditation, on being silent, on getting to know who you are naked <laughs> without the buzz of the, the TV or the internet and all that good stuff, right? And so here we see the awareness card. And as we do allow ourselves to sit and be still and breathe and honor a deeper sanctum, a deeper place within us, what happens is like what this card shows. That Buddha within, that higher self within, begins to become revealed. And the Buddha within has a much different plan for you that takes you on the adventure of life than, this is interesting, than the part of you that thinks it's got it all figured out and that wants to control the stage, the stage lighting, the set, the other characters, write the whole script for everyone, including yourself. <laughs> it's a much different energy that gets set up, and this is the invitation this month. It's to explore the truth in your heart, to keep practicing, keep doing those spiritual practices that help you be silent, that help you regain a sense of balance and center, so that with ease you can hear and honor those divine inklings, those feelings, those nudges from your higher self, from God, Holy Spirit, whatever name you give it. There is a divine tapestry within your heart, and it's in the silent spaces when we allow ourselves, whether you do your Reiki on yourself, whether you take a few breaths, just turn, just turn the computer off, turn that phone off, read a book, go for a walk and don't take your phone. Go out to dinner with your friends and make a, make a commitment that none of you will pull out your phones <laughs> the entire time. It's this kind of stuff. That's when, again, the space for that sacred divine energy can move through. As long as you are cock blocking that sacred space, the space is where that sacred energy can come through by being distracted by earthly realms. Your energy becomes denser. Your awareness becomes diffused. And so we meditate, we pray, 
we do our practices, our healing practices, and we begin to burn through the veils, the awareness within is activated. And we can easier tune in to what our divine adventure, what our divine heart is calling, and actually make moves on that. Not just think about it, not just journal about it, which is all good stuff, not just meditate about it, which is good as well, but to actually, in the third dimension then, bring it down to earth, bring heaven down to earth through you. So it is interesting as well that we did have the control card. This is a card of the mind, and it's a card that is holding on so tight, but it is a card of the mind. And control, once again, strangles the channels through which life force energy flows. And here you are, this beautiful individual. And this card, even though it, it represents a female energy, it is. It's all about the feminine. And whether you're male or female, you have both inside of you. And so this card, receptivity, is so beautiful. And it really depicts this calm beautiful energy through the waters we represent the emotions the emotions are balanced look at that kundalini and that shakti moving through all the channels through the spinal column that shushumna moving up to the top the lotus at the crown chakra and then extending out look at the hands are open and reaching up to the heavens to the sky to the cosmos that stardust just twinkling through her when we sit with control and it's very hard, it's very tricky. You don't think you're being controlling. And I'm sure maybe your lover or your family members, some even good friends might let you know <laughs> when you are being controlling. But it is tricky because we get so used to, I think, thinking we have to have everything always figured out completely. And so we don't, and because that's the way the world teaches us how to get ahead. So it's very difficult to just relax and let go and let love and let go and let God. It can be very challenging to just do that, but that's what we're being called to do is to sustain. And even if you didn't get to start last month, sustain any practices that you have been building on. Get back in there because there are juicy messages that are waiting to carry you forward on your adventure of life that is not the nine to five job, that is not, you know, spending your time and energy doing something that your heart is not in. As you relax, the invitation is to let go of control. When you let go of control, all of the life force energy that is in abundance and infinite, that I like to call love, some people call it God, force, life force, love force, this energy is permeating through you and it is available everywhere. But if your channels within are not open and receptive, receptivity is the name of the game here, then those channels become blocked. It's like, you know, you go to yoga to open the channels, to let the life force energy flow through you more, not only through the circulatory system, the lymph system, all the systems of the body, but through the energetic body that you inhabit. And likewise, when you do acupuncture, right? You put the needles in there and it's to free up stagnant energy through the meridians so that that energy can flow. It's like unclogging a traffic jam and so all the cars can flow freely. Okay, this is wonderful. Now it's really exciting too because there is there is something going on in relationship. There is something that's been brewing as a friendship. There, there's really a strong rooted friendship here. It also has the feeling that there is romance or there's some kind of, there's an attraction, there's a chemistry, as well as a friendliness, an emotional, even if there is strong attraction and chemistry, there's something else going on emotionally that gives this connection, this, this relationship, this friendship, deeper roots than just a one night stand or a hot lover's fling. It shows that there's much more to it and, and it is interesting. So whether you're in a long-term relationship, whether you are just meeting someone or this month you are going to meet this someone, or whether you've kind of been in and out of a relationship, 
what's happening is something's going to shift this month because right next to it we have the Thunderbolt card. And the thunderbolt is all about the rising of your kundalini energy, of your sexual energy, of your libido, of your life force energy. And this card comes up almost every month. <laughs> we're really purging here. And you know, we're in the spring. So it is, if you haven't gotten around to spring cleaning your mind, your body, your emotions, it's time. It's time, and when we don't do that work, when we don't do those intervals of work for ourselves, the universe comes along and does it for us, and sometimes not in the most uh, pain-free and graceful ways. So what our invitation is, is, is to keep doing the work, which is creating peace and relaxation within ourselves so that we are clear and open to the divine wisdom of the universe, and also, when this shift comes, this rise of Kundalini within you, when this is ready to happen, it's either going to be a big boom or it's going to be an inner boom of knowing like, oh, this is what I have to do. It's time now, even though we have roots and we have a lot of love and a lot of good experiences, my heart is saying we can still be friends, but it's time now to walk away from this relationship and create a new sense of who I am and go on the adventure of self outside of this relationship. It can also speak to, it's time, I have fallen in love with this person, ba-boom, this is totally rocking my world, it's making me think about doing everything in a completely new way, and I, I think I'm falling for this person. At first I thought I just had the hots for them, but now something deeper is happening. And what I love about this card is that the branches intertwine and down below the roots intertwine as well. So there really is this long lasting foundation and beautiful energy between yourself and this other person. And again, whether it's time for that relationship to come to a close or for a new relationship to begin, it's going to be okay as long as you follow the truth in your heart because what you have together either has been of great service and healing to both of you and it's very natural to move on now. Perhaps that cycle is over. And you can do so with grace and with trust and respect for one another. And you can still be friends. In fact, there's no way you cannot be friends. So that's the cool message about that. And if you're getting that thunderbolt <laughs> that's saying, oh my God, love is here. I'm totally ready to move on or I'm totally ready for this new relationship. Ah, you know, and you're all jazzed and excited. Thunderbolts, thunderbolts, thunderbolts. It's saying that what is coming has the potential to really reveal to you these beautiful, strong roots and to be able to develop a friendship with your lover. Right? I mean, good sex is great. <laughs> hot, hot chemistry is wonderful. And what a bonus that you get to explore friendship, really deep friendship, honest friendship. That's, that's, that's a lot of intimacy. Sometimes having that kind of intimacy, as well as the hot, steamy love <laughs> and, you know, chemical attraction, sexiness is uh, actually takes things to a whole other level in relationships. So enjoy. That's in store for you this month, one way or another. And even if that, you know, that hot steamy chemistry, if you are breaking up, if that is your divine guidance this month and you are separating, the hot steamy energy you seek is always within you. <laughs> mm. It is. It's within you first. You find that within yourself first. You have to learn how to give yourself the best orgasm you can ever imagine before anyone else is going to be able to give that to you. And it sounds precocious. Is that even the right word? It sounds a little sassy, but it's true. And when I say orgasm, I mean, yes, physical, but also the journey of your life orgasm, the adventure of your life, you showing up and being who you are from the heart. Woo! Okay. So, to finish up this reading, we have these three really beautiful, spectacular cards. And the, the urge is to keep meditating. Keep meditating. Keep meditating. Consciousness. 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 Keep raising the bar. Third eye. Third eye. Activation. Be still. The gray 
the gray in this card symbolizes that little diamond down the bottom, that gray symbolizes the mind. And our job is to continually prepare the space within ourselves so that the highest level of consciousness can flow through us, so that we can not only embody it, but let it move in and let it move out abundantly. No holding, no control, right? No lack consciousness, abundance consciousness card of the emotions. Let it flow. Let yourself be like water. Let that, that consciousness, let that adventure take you. Let it take you to new places. You can't even imagine where you're going because everything you've thought about, everything that you think about or project is based on your past experiences. And that's limited. There's so much. There's infinite opportunity, infinite possibility, miracles, magic all sorts of amazing juiciness out there. And your job is to meditate, to continue getting to know who you are naked, without the TV on, without looking at your phone, without judging yourself against other people, without comparing yourself to other people, but to just Keep practicing, keep going within, keep creating the correct conditions within yourself to know yourself by. Get out of the mind. The mind only does dual thinking. Only does dual thinking. Black and, <laughs> Black and white, left and right, binary, binary, ones and zeros. Fear, love. Where your consciousness is ready to take you is to a place where there is love and only love. Love and only love. Love and only love. This, you giving yourself the best orgasm of your life by living the truth in your heart, that's love and only love. And as you meditate, as you say yes to all the juiciness in your heart, the infinite realm of possibility opens up to embrace you, to welcome you in to what is unknown, into realms that you, again, can't even imagine what they are because you've never been there before. That eagle represents freedom. And it's also the higher aspect of the Scorpio. And I say this because the eagle's really important in terms of having garnered enough experience to know dark and light, but to know better and to rise above, and to take the high road, and to choose love as a practice, love over and over again, only love. There's a beautiful sunset, and there's a sense of you getting out into nature. It's coming a beautiful time of the year. It's time to go for those walks without your phone. <laughs> and it might even be just you on your own. Breathe. Take off your shoes if you like to walk barefoot, if it's been a while or it's been snowing where you live or something. You know, get back into touch, literally, with the earth. Touch the earth. Touch her. She's got so much juiciness for you. And that in itself is an adventure. What this reading ends with is this beautiful card, We Are the World. This represents unity consciousness that can only come from within you first. It's cosmic, it's cosmic and it's global, right? You see all those people holding hands, dancing ecstatically, the planet Earth right in the middle, all the stars surrounding it. We're floating in space, people. That's really all there is to it. We're just floating in space. <laughs> One love, unity consciousness, namaste consciousness. That's where, we're, that's where we're heading because that's the truth within us. And it's true for you if you believe it to be true. And as you go on this adventure, as you listen to your heart and allow yourself to go on this adventure of the truth within you, and you keep meditating and keep staying open to possibilities. Now the red in this card represents fire. And this is a different kind of fire than trying to make things happen. 
than 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 trying to manipulate from the out from trying to manipulate things on the outside. The card of possibilities speaks to the divine creation revealing to you that which is possible for you. And it comes to you as a vision. And it's different than you trying to visualize something or you trying to manifest through creating what you think you want, what you think is for your good. While it's important to know that stuff and to be in tune with that stuff, it's equally as important at, it's equally as important to let that go and give it up to a higher source, to a higher power. So that higher source, that higher power, that love can rearrange those times, those peoples, those places, those circumstances, those situations. There's that car again. In ways that will serve not only your highest good, but the highest good of all. Of all, of all, of all. So this card can represent travel. It can represent um, new friends, meeting new friends in, in beautiful places as you travel through the world, and really getting that sense of really exploring and having that experience of unity consciousness. Okay, so yes, travel. And also travel, cosmic travel, right? That's where your meditation, opening the third eye, will invite you, is to go beyond the world, to be in the world and not of it, to bridge heaven on earth through your being, and to share that with others. That's what the message is, and it's so beautiful, and it's so powerful. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, now is the time where we are going to pull one Mayan Oracle card, and we're going to see what our divine guidance is this month for this card. I read from the book. I have not learned these cards off yet, but they have been a favorite of mine for a long, long time. And if you're into Mayan teachings at all, they are very sort of cosmic and um, sort of cosmic, very cosmic, <laughs> actually. Okay, we're going to choose a card. I'm getting the number four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the fourth down. One, two, three, here we go, four. Universal movement. Universal movement. The thirteenth tone calls forth the greater pattern. The hand of fate beckons and then catapults you free to journey home. Qualities expect a miracle. Wild card, unseen forces, unexpected change, flexibility, open system, touch of destiny, interdimensional shift galactic wave rider. 13 is the ray of universal movement, the foundation of self within the foundation of essence self combined with the rhythm of the Trinity. 13 is the number sacred to the goddess, that feminine energy, that receptivity we got earlier. Evoke this grace, it is your birthright. 13 touches you with the hand of unseen forces and radical change. Drawing this card alerts you that whatever is resisting change is unexamined or is stationary, is being catalyzed into movement. Drawing this number indicates that something unexpected is coming, something that may dramatically change the course of your life. You are being touched by fate. Move through identifications of ego self into open consciousness. Olin, the Mayan goddess of movement, asks you to surrender to the perfection of the larger pattern of your essence self. From the perspective of surrender and trust, what movement is being called for now? Pay attention to synchronicities and seeming coincidences that jump into your awareness. 13 provides the possibility of a radical frequency phase shift, offering you limitless new openings. Ah, possibilities. It's all synchronized. Becoming a skywalker. Become a skywalker. That's incredible. Be open and flexible, allowing changing reference points to become dynamic allies. Open to the workings of destiny offered by universal movement. Drawing this card says to be on the alert for a miracle. Whatever you have been offering in positive energy toward the realization of your dreams and vision is being actualized 
in receiving 13. This indicates the coalescing of the quantum potential of a miracle into its realization and fulfillment. This is so very awesome. And this is the book, by the way, that comes with the cards in case you're curious. A Galactic Language of Light. Isn't that just so beautiful? Okay, so this is like super duper amazing. Definitely, definitely time. It's always time, right? It, even though time is not real. <laughs> it's always time to be one with yourself, to be one with the truth in your heart. And that card just fully sums it up. The only way, well, maybe not the only way, but a way, the way to gain, to be, mm, let me not say gain, but the only way to be present and to allow the miracle and the miracles that life wants to shift and give you through you is through you creating the correct conditions within yourself and go on that adventure of being true to you. Keep practicing in your meditation. Stay clear so that third eye energy at the top there, where is it? Boop, boop. That third eye can keep channeling and downloading those divine signals that will give you goals, that will show you where to go, what to do, what to say and to whom. That's a prayer from A Course in Miracles that I love. That will open the way for you to see possibilities that you could have never have thought of by yourself. You trying to figure out your life on your own is great. And there's a, a, a wonderful exercise in that. Yet at the same time, this month is saying like, even let that go. Go to a certain point, know the baseline sketch, and then forget about the sketch and invite in that which is greater than yourself. And expect a miracle this month. I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for me. Blessings and Namaste.